Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kate, or I go by Always More Sims here on YouTube, and today we're doing another speed build. Uh, this house is called Stonecutter's Dwelling. It is a four bedroom, two and a half bath house with a nursery, a laundry room, and then this upstairs like hangout loft space. Um, it has like a foosball table and a chin up bar, whatever you call it, um, a darts board. A little TV and like a, a gaming station like it's it's just like a fun little hangout spot for like your teen or your children's sims um, it is a modern style house and yeah so this house was actually built for my sims 3 for every generation there's a genre challenge um, and normally when I'm building these houses, I kind of have an idea of the sim that I'm building them for because I normally, like each generation is not only based on a genre of book, but also on um, characters from books. And I normally know, oh, I wanna have a sim named after this character and this character and this character. And so then I'm, I'm kind of able to envision like what the house needs to contain because I know what kind of sim it's going to be but I don't really have that advantage this time around um part of the the rules for this challenge is that the children have to be named after destinations so like Paris, London, Rio you know like you get what I'm saying that like they have to be named after a travel destination so because of that, um, I don't get to really pick, like, I do get to pick the names, but they're not based off of characters, and so I don't really know what kind of sim they're going to be, uh, but I do, I will be planning who they marry, and they will be marrying, like, sims named after characters from the book, um, from the books, because uh, this generation is based off of the book series The Kingdom Keepers by Ridley Pearson. It's, I didn't... I will preach about how good at least the first few books of this series are till the cows come home. I don't really care if you're like a, a Disney fanatic. I am not a Disney fanatic. I'm not a diehard Disney fan by any means. I actually haven't liked a Disney movie in quite a few years. I feel like they've just kind of flopped um, over the last couple of years. I feel like they've just kind of lost a lot of their charm, but maybe that's just me. Um, anyways. I'm not a Disney fanatic. I would rather go to Universal than Disney World. Like, don't get me wrong. But, like, the behind-the-scenes stuff from the Kingdom Keepers books, it's just so cool. And it's just, like, such a cool concept. Um, and it is a little outdated because, like, there's still Splash Mountain and there's Test Track and Epcot. Um, and, like, now Disney's getting rid of Tom Sawyer Island or something... Uh, I think all of the Tom Tw Tom Sawyer stuff and like this is stuff that is still in the books um so like they are kind of outdated in that sense but like I cannot I am even trying to convince my dad to read these books and like the books are like written for like 13 14 year olds okay but it's just it's such a cool concept like I love rereading these books it's just it's, it's just so cool anyways so like our children will be marrying Sims who are inspired by characters from the books. So I nicknamed this house Wayne's House um, because our first child is going to be marrying a Sim named Wayne. And um, I didn't want to base the house off of the partner rather than my child Sim. So I still didn't like furnish the house how I would if like my Sim was Wayne. But yeah. Um, I named, I, I was like, this is, I, I, um, in my schedule, I put, like, in quotes, Wayne's house, um, and, like, that's where the stone cutter part comes from, um, because in the first book, the kids are tasked with solving the stone cutter's quill, which was a riddle left to Wayne by Walt Disney himself, so, yeah, um, I want to say that's about it for the house. <laughs> um, I will say the like the like 
big balcony area right on top of the garage. I had a really hard time furnishing that spot because I didn't want it to look stupid in my screenshots. Because <laughs> um, it's very visible. And so it's like very, it's very easy to make it look ridiculous by like placing a bunch of furniture up there. So I was like, if this was a house I was actually going to be playing in, I would probably put a lot more stuff out there because I wouldn't really care how it looked if I was actually playing in it. But because I was wanting it to look nice for the screenshots, I kind of left it sparse. Um, but yeah. So uh, I wanted to kind of update you guys on the whole job thing. If you've been following my channel for the last few months, then you know I very abruptly, like towards the end of March, was told that they were getting rid of my position. Um, more specifically, they decided that my position was just a one-person job and not a two-person job because there had been two of us doing it. Um, and I was the one that got the boot and the person I was working with got to stay. Um, and then, you know, I was, I was told that I could apply, like I was going to be put into one of the other positions within the company that was like, they were most in need of having someone in like that role. Um, but that, uh, you know, feel free to apply for other positions. We don't want to discourage you from applying for other positions, like apply what um, interests you. So that's what I did. I have applied and been interviewed, um, about 20 times, roughly. And I have only been told yes for one of those interviews, but they, like the ones that I've all been told no for, I have not been given actual reasons as to why. And so then I'm like, okay, if there's something wrong with like the answers I'm giving you, I'd rather like get some constructive criticism here than just be told no. Um, but instead of, because they tell me we're going with like another option at this time and you know, I don't get, there's no elaboration and it really, really bugs me. Um, cause again, I'm like, how am I supposed to like answer your questions better if you don't give me any kind of, or like, I would at least want to know why I wasn't picked but they don't tell me that. Um, so I was assigned to, uh, there's like numerous locations of this company in town and I am going to be purposefully vague. Um, so I do apologize if that makes it kind of confusing and hard to follow. I understand that, that it does, but, um, just for my sake, I am going to keep it vague. Um, but there are numerous locations for this company in town and they were, they had placed me in, a location all the way on the other side of town and like even though the buildings are supposed to be run the same way in all locations they're not <laughs> they they are not run the same way um there's like different like they just all do their things their own way kind of differently um and so it's like i really don't want to go to all the way across town to another building to you know, relearn the way they do things and relearn the staff. And I just, it was basically what I had been doing, but just at another level where they still needed two people. Um, and to be completely honest, I, like, even if I hadn't been forced out of the position I was in, I had been, I had started to, like, casually look at other positions, but like once I was told that I was being booted out of my spot, um, things between the person I was working with and I got really bad. Um, like just really toxic. Uh, she was very difficult to work with. Um, and she'd only been in the position, let's see, four months longer than I had. She had been. Yeah, she'd been hired four months before me. Um, so I was like, it's not like you've been here four years longer than me. Get off your high horse <laughs> is, is how I felt. Um, but she just, she thought that she was all that, that she knew best, that only her ideas were good ideas, that anything I suggested wasn't worthy of putting our time into. Um, it had to be her way or no way. 
like she was just extremely difficult to work with and it was very uncomfortable and like it got to the point that like she'd come in in the morning and I was still trying to be um at least amicable and so I'd say you know like good morning and she'd just completely ignore me (laughs) and we didn't speak more than we had to and anytime I had any questions or um like we needed to work on something or whatever she acted like it was just the biggest inconvenience to her um and it was just I was I didn't want to be forced out of my position um because I mean like that's what I applied for that's what I had wanted to do that's what had brought me to the company in the first place but I couldn't I was I was just so over working with her and so, um, it, it got to the point that I was like, okay, do I keep the, like, do I stay in the position they've put me in that, you know, I'm familiar with, but it's in, you know, another building, it's another location, it's another group of people, it's like a whole new set of, like, how they do things. But I risk possibly working with another person that I do not get along with at all. Or I had been offered a position in the building I was in, in my own space. Um, But it was something I had literally no experience in. Um, But it was something that was highly needed and that not a lot of people because I'm technically qualified for this position but um it's not something people typically want it's not a like sought after job because it's it can be quite difficult and again I have like literally next to no experience in it and so I was really I was like do I take the position Again, at this other building, this other location where it's a whole new staff, whole new set of, like, or whole new routine, with, but something I have experience in, but with, like, risking not getting along with this person and being miserable again, or do I take the job that is in the building I already know, um, in my own space, with, you know, everybody that I'm familiar with, all the, like, the routines I already know, I wouldn't have to, like, relearn the building itself or, again, how they do things. But I have literally next to no idea on how to do the actual job itself. Um, So I really had to kind of weigh the pros and cons here. And I understand, like, this is, like, it's, like, at least I have a job. I know it's kind of, like, first world problem type thing. And I, I, I totally get that. And I know how it kind of comes off. But this has caused, like, the most anxiety because I ended up picking the job at the building I was at um I was like okay I'll like I'll 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 try it I really want to be in my own space I just I do not want to risk being stuck with another person that I can't stand that I can't work with um again and so I accepted the job but with it came so much anxiety um it I didn't go anywhere near my, like, new office space till, um, halfway into July, um, because I officially started in the new position, um, actually as of last Monday was officially my first day, and I hadn't touched it. I hadn't I hadn't, I didn't want to go into the office. Um, I was kind of like psyching myself up about it. Um, it was really starting to freak me out. Um, just that anxiety that I have no idea what I'm doing here. What did I sign up for? (laughs) Um, and it sent me into probably the worst depression I think I've ever been in. Like, I lost absolutely all interest in all of my interests. I didn't want anything to do with The Sims. I didn't want anything to do with gaming. I didn't want anything to do with my books or with my music or literally anything. I didn't want to do anything, (laughs) like, at all. Um, I lost interest in 
literally everything. Um, it had my parents pretty concerned. Um, and it was all stemming from this job. Like it was keeping me up at night, just how much I really despised the position I'd been put in and, you know, that this is not what I wanted. This is not what I signed up for. Never, like looking back a year ago, never would I have guessed that this is where I would be today. That like, that like I'd be working this position. Like again, it's, it's not, I would not have applied to the company to work this position. I would not have gone out of my way to work this position. And it's just been really hard for me not to get super overwhelmingly negative about it. And then I finally went into the space. I started organizing. I started making it my own. And I was finally feeling pretty good about it. And um, I was working. I was like starting to um, kind of... Uh, familiarize myself with things, starting to set up how I wanted to do stuff. And then came everybody and their mother. Um, I still, to this day, constantly have people popping into my office to basically tell me that what I have set up and what I have planned and how I want to do things is not the right way, that I'm doing it wrong. But the people telling me this are people that have never worked the job, that have never worked my position, um, that like literally don't know any more than I do. And so then like I still am able to talk with the person who had been in the job before me um, and she's like, uh, don't listen to them because what you're doing is perfectly fine. Like I think you're totally on the right path. Like what's wrong with how you're doing it I don't you're fine so like that was really reassuring but it was causing like I was literally ready to cry anytime literally anyone stepped into the office because I was like I swear to god if you are in here to tell me I am doing it wrong again and I should do it this way I'm going to start throwing things (laughs) like it was oh my god stress I'm feeling slightly better not a whole lot, slightly better. Um, but we're in the screenshot, so I, I am all out of time. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. House, Twitter, uh, gaming channel, all down in the description if you'd like to check them out. If you'd like to download the house, feel free to do so. Do not take credit for it, it is not yours. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. Sorry for the kind of the depressing talk. Um, but yeah, bye guys.